This is something you want to learn how to avoid. Now you can go back with your brush and rework this if you're using high quality paper. Even when it's almost completely dry. People will tell you not to, but you can. Welcome to Learn to Paint with Scarlet. Um, I had a few people over yesterday and I didn't believe that I had painted that. It originally comes just with the paper and this is for doing testing. And this is um, Canson and it is 300 grams, so 140 pound paper. And it is in a rough and then I also have it in fine grain. So I'm testing out these papers. I'm going to do a video at some point for you guys so that we can go through um, the different papers and see what happens, how they react and such. So today I want to work on the raspberry. Before I start that, I think I want to put a shadow on this tiny little mushroom because um, it's really cool the way it is, but if it had a shadow, it would really, really pop. It would just pop right off the, sh the, the page. So if I move a few things, now in order to do a shadow, grab some of my brushes. Oops. First of all, I'm gonna need a shadow. So having this white paper is really helpful because I can see where the shadow is. And then I can kind of line it up. Okay, okay, so if the shadow's gonna look like that, then it's gonna be a soft shadow. Now I could also make it a hard shadow simply by changing my light source. So I have my light over here. If I loosen it, turn it around, and see how that gets really, really sharp. So that's probably not what I want. Maybe something, maybe something like, well, no. Yeah, let's do something soft. Alright, so we need the pencil. And I'm just using a little mechanical pencil. Um, this is a 0 0.03 mechanical pencil, so it's super, 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 super fine, which is great. Okay, so I want to do the shadow by coming down at the bottom. Now I am paying attention to the shadow I have um, on my paper. Obviously pay attention to the one you have on your, on your paper, but also pay attention to how you drew it. You want to match your drawing just a little bit um, to the shadow. So in this case, my, my drawing goes up, so my shadow should go up. And my drawing came across, so my shadow should come across. Now I've got one extra line in the middle here I don't want. I do not um, pre-draw and then transfer my work onto the paper. Um, I find that it just doesn't make sense for me personally because first of all I can easily draw it out um, but secondly any tiny little erasing I'm going to do I would have to do that if I did the transfer as well because transfers are never perfect um, and then of course it's a transfer not a drawing I think I think the key here is to practice your drawing practice 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 get really good at your drawing and once you're comfortable and you're good at your drawing um, then you won't have a problem. You won't have to worry about getting it perfect. Just draw it. I'm gonna pick out one of these colors that's like a pale, hmm, pale grayish. I think a natural tint number 782 would be perfect from the Schminky line. Um, maybe we'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there so it's gray. I like my shadows to be muddy. I know that sounds weird. Um, but I do. And my brush is so absorbent that whatever I'm putting here is just soaking right up into it. So I'm going to have to test it. Grab a little piece of paper and test the color. Ooh, that's very light. You can't see that. Now I have a special brush. Um, just a little brush that I use specifically for lifting paint, especially when the paint's really hard like this. I don't want to use my good brushes, so this is just a simple little Da Vinci uh, mixing brush. 
It has a number here somewhere. Number 943, if you want to look it up. And I'm going to use that to lift up my color. And I just mix some brown and some natural tint. And I'm gonna mix a lot of water. So I want it really, really light. And I think I want it uh, bluer. A little more Payne's gray in there. There we go, a little natural tint. So those are three colors that really make mud together, but they make a beautiful mud. It's almost like the perfect wall color. All right, so. Now because it's a shadow, um, and I want it to be really, really soft, essentially it's a wash. So I'm gonna lay the water down first. And for this, I wanna be careful. My painting is completely dry. I did it yesterday morning. But, um, and my brush has some of the paint in it now. But um, some papers will keep the paint on the surface. So even then, even though the painting is dry, you still want to consider uh, that the paint might move if you push it, if you, if you rub it too hard. just with water and then drop the color in, but there was pretty color on my brush. So, I'm gonna bring the shadow down to the bottom and make it even. So I'm moving that puddle of water down. So it's all in one place. And then using a thirsty brush, I'll just pick it up again. The paint's gray I originally used for my signature is now lifting off a bit. All of a sudden, our little mushroom has uh, a shadow. I did the shadow, this mushroom, I painted this mushroom darker than the original because I wanted it to really stand out. It's, it's more of a white mushroom, obviously, and it's a bell mushroom or a, a button mushroom. But you can also put water here and do a blend out so that the shadow would completely blend. So this is a pretty harsh shadow, but if we wanted to do that, we would take um, clean water Go around the outside here. It would help if we didn't have a line. Okay. I'm using clean water. And lift that shadow out here until it blends into nothing. or let it bleed out into nothing. Okay, in that case, I have to go back and erase um, my line. 
And this little signature is kind of annoying because this line here makes it look like it's connected to the bottom of that. And then of course it's not, but it does make it now. There is something interesting going on in the center. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like there's a double line. It looks like there's two shadows here, which could happen. And I think I want to make it a little darker. So I squished it back into its line. Oh, there we go. Perfect. You can rework watercolor over and over and over. Don't worry about it. Just go back in and keep playing. The, 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 the thing to remember is do it on test paper. Do it on a piece where you're just having fun. See how many times you can rework that wash and you can blend it in and make it perfect. Um, because if you don't touch it, or if you decide, you know, don't overwork your work, you'll never know what overworking is. You'll never get a sense of how much touching you can do. Where is that magic moment where you can still adjust things? And where is the magic moment where you can't adjust things? So I highly recommend going in there with your brush and mucking it up and trying to fix blooms. It should be something like this. Right, so this is a bloom or um, or a cauliflower and it's because either I dropped something on it or there was a little bit uh, a little puddle of water that remained when I did the wash and that puddle will spread out as it dries this is something you want to learn how to avoid now you can go back with your brush and rework this if you're using high quality paper even when it's almost completely dry people will tell you not to but you can you can go back and you can rework it it wouldn't add more water Make sure your, well in this case my painting, my paper is almost completely dry, so it doesn't matter. I'm just lifting off that little line of extra paint. And I'll smooth it. Okay, so we can see that it's not perfect, but this side is definitely better now um, than this side. And the next thing I would do here is so I would go in later. I'm just going to do one side so you guys can see it. Go in later and I would do a wash on top of the first wash. And when the second wash um, dries, it will mask, repair, whatever you want to call the first wash. Okay, so you see how there's a little puddle now here. So this puddle will become the next and the next cauliflower if I don't uh, move it around or remove it using a thirsty brush. So I dry off the brush and I touch it in and I just pull that little bit out, that little puddle. So you can go back and fix your work. Now it's not going to be perfect. If I had done that before it completely dried, I would have a better effect. It would work a little better. Go so. back and test and try and move things and play with stuff. Don't just put down the, the, the water and leave it. And if you've got actual puddles, they are going to clash. So play with your puddles and figure out what they're going to do before you try to do something really amazing and then you're disappointed because there's all these blooms everywhere and you don't know why. I'm Scarlett, thanks for watching. This was how to do shadows. And this is the continuation on the video of how to do highlights. 
So coming up in another tutorial, and I can't promise exactly when, but it will be up soon, I'm going to tackle these raspberries. I started doing a single raspberry here in the middle, and I'm going to do a few more, so there'll be a little collection. We're going to talk about how to do the actual raspberry, how to do the highlights, how to do the shadows, how to do the form, obviously how to make it 3D, how to put in those shadows, all that good fun stuff wrapped into one lovely video, which will probably be, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, like always, there's extras on Patreon. You guys can totally check me out there um, if you want to support the channel or become a patron of the channel. If you want to just give me um, uh, a gratitude tip, that's a great place to do it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. Toodaloo!